Caitlin Oberlander, Samantha Ward, I'm Hannah Cooper, I'm Lauren Cole, and this morning we will be discussing uh, our analysis of Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, and CDI Engineering, uh, three companies in the engineering industry. We'll discuss the criteria that we examined to determine our overall recommendation for Skillsoft and the Women in Action program. Uh, our overall recommendation is that they pursue Raytheon as a client. Um, so before we discuss our analysis of these companies, uh, Sam will discuss a little bit of general information about the engineering industry and why we chose to uh, look at companies in this industry. Okay, so in 2010, the D Department of Labor stated that 47% of females and 53% of males made up the United States labor workforce. Um, of the 47% of females, 27% of them um, had STEM careers and the other 73% had other careers. In 2013, Nadia Foud, she's a psychologist from the University of Wisconsin, conducted a study of 5,300 female uh, women who earned engineering degrees within the past six decades. Uh, she did this to figure out why so few women stayed in the engineering field. So during the survey, 62% of the respondents were currently work, still working in engineering. The other 38% had left the field. Of the 5,300 women um, that they surveyed, 40% graduated with STEM degrees. 60% uh, uh, graduated with non-STEM degrees. Out of the 40% who graduated with the STEM degrees, 20% of, uh, of them were engineers, and the other 80% were in science, technology, and math. Uh, of the 20% of engineers, who graduated, 11% are currently still practicing engineering, and the other 89% uh, left the field. And out of the 89% that are not practicing, 17% left because of caregiving reasons, and the other 83 left because of other reasons. And it was stated that the main reason women left engineering is because of the environment in which they worked. Uh, women often struggle to find opportunities to advance in their fields and frequently experience hostility and sexism from colleagues. Um, and this treatment often bred to a lack of self-confidence and a general uneasiness among women in the office. So some criteria that we had to consider. Uh, the overall size of the workforce within the selected companies, the published statistics regarding women in leadership within the company, also the programs that they might have already had in place, to demonstrate a commitment to solving the problem of women in engineering, and also the growth and change within individual companies in the industry as a whole. And so what we found um, that Raytheon already had a couple of um, programs. One was talent retention and, acquisi and acquisition, and that is to discuss what the diversity is and how the company um, culture and business take it. Another one was employee resource groups, and that was where people can build new networks. Another one that we found really interesting was communications. And this was where the company launched an advertising campaign to inform business partners, employees, and media about Raytheon's commitment to diversity. And the last one was community involvement, and this was where the employees um, can volunteer for charities. This is a company statistics, and how we found the number of female employees was we multiplied the number of employees by 11%, and so we found this number range. And what we also found was that CDI had less than 1% for women coming to the And we also found all this information through market one. So our, the largest company that we had invested in was um, Lockheed Martin, and they had a lot of large, they're a large, the largest company, so they have about four different programs that they already have in place, including the Equal Opportunity Program, the Corporate Sustainability Council, Diversity Councils, and Connecting at Work. And because they're such a large company, we decided that we didn't want to pitch them straight to Skillsoft yet, since Skillsoft is not already in the engineering field. Um, and with these programs already in place, we feel like they wouldn't try going after the Women in Action program because they're going to feel that they already have um, a good ground on trying to get women into the uh, workforce. Um, Raytheon, which is a lot smaller than Lockheed Martin, um, 
as Lauren just stated, have a bunch of programs already in place, but these programs also haven't produced enough women in the workforce and in their company. Um, even with the programs, there's just not enough um, women who have been able to sustain a job in the hierarchy at all. Um, and CBI, which is our smallest company, um, the small numbers of employees um, with access to a large network of engineers and their several type of staffing services. Um, some of their weaknesses is that they only have one woman in a leadership role um, on the board of directors and there's no programs in place to solve um, the women um, in the hierarchy. But unfortunately, because they're such a small company, it would be very hard to try implementing um, a women in action program with not enough employees. So why did we choose Raytheon? Uh, Raytheon was neither the best or worst company based on the criteria that we examined for the three companies. Um, but with this in mind, uh, it did score well in overall number of workers as well as programs in place to demonstrate the recognition of the problem of uh, women's role in leadership and management within the engineering industry. Um, we felt that Raytheon would be a better company to pursue than Lockheed Martin uh, as um, Caitlin just discussed um, because Lockheed Martin already has a number of programs in place uh, and not only do they demonstrate the recognition of the problem but they've clearly shown results for the, uh, the programs that they do have in place um, with their published statistics stating that 21% of leaders within the company are women. Uh, so we felt that Raytheon, while they do have some programs in place to demonstrate their recognition of the problem of women in leadership, they could benefit from the use of women in action because it would allow them to manifest this commitment to women um, and hopefully see some definitive results. Um, so some additional reasons that um, Skillsoft could pursue Raytheon. Raytheon could also benefit from the use of other programs that Skillsoft could offer them. So this would look, uh, be a good uh, criteria to consider for Skillsoft because they would um, be able to provide other services and just increase their overall relationship with Raytheon. They could benefit from a number of programs that Skillsoft offers, such as general management and leadership uh, programs, as well as professional effectiveness and lots of IT-related things as well. Additionally, um, Skillsoft's work with the federal government would also provide credibility um, when they're talking to Raytheon, uh, because Raytheon is already a respected client of the government, um, so they already have that connection. Um, so the connection between Skillsoft and the government would also be um, something good to, to have going forward. And then finally, uh, Raytheon is a large, well-respected engineering firm. Um, they could probably open future doors for Skillsoft with pursuit of additional engineering firms. Uh, so we've decided that Raytheon would be the best client for Skillsoft to pursue for Women in Action. Um, and given this recommendation, we've developed a short timeline of kind of the suggested process that Skillsoft could take to contact Raytheon. Um, so we would suggest that now they could begin researching um, and finding contacts within Raytheon to um, begin their relationship, their professional relationship. Um, we suggest that in October of this year they could um, reach out to Raytheon regarding the Women in Action program. Uh, this would likely be when Raytheon would be planning their budget for uh, the following year as far as starting new programs to help women within the company. Um, so January 2017 would be the beginning of their uh, budgeted year would be they could implement Women in Action um, or other products from Skillsoft on a small scale within the company and try to um, develop them specifically for engineering and adapt them to fit the needs of the individual company. Um, we suggest that again in October of next year they reach out to Raytheon again to figure out what to um, what they liked about the programs or what they didn't like about the programs um, and then beginning in January of the following year they could um, begin a full-scale implementation of Skillsoft at Raytheon. Uh, so these are the criteria and the companies that we looked at in determining our final recommendation of Raytheon. Are there any questions? So I am, you gave them uh, a, a pretty high-level view of um, why you chose the dates that you did. Is there anything? Did you use any product launch as a baseline for these dates? So, for example, uh, um, you're giving them a year to essentially try the product out. 
what you did, office hours with skill stuff, 